Okay then, so following on from my video comparing Soldiers of God to Soldiers of Rome War Games Rules, um, I've set up a table here with my 15mm figures. Um, show them to you a bit closer in a moment, but over this side I've got my Gauls and over this side my early Imperial Romans and um, just to give you a kind of brief outline of how the game mechanics work uh, you start with three separate battles so there's a right a center and a left and each has a commander um, now it's card driven and at the beginning of the game you have to decide on a battle plan um, and they are in this set of rules at any rate they are different um, for each each faction so the Romans have uh, a different variation different group of, of um, battle plans to the the barbarians um, but in all cases you're playing with seven cards three of which are permanent battle plan cards so each battle will have a card that it retains throughout the game and the the cards are chosen um, not randomly but the the first card of a particular type that turns up is the one that you're obliged to use you can't go through and pick um, sorry pick, no, so there, pick your favorite um, because the, it matters what this says on here as well so in the case of the Romans they're going for a battle plan of all-out attack which means that the two flanks have march orders and the center uh, battle has a charge order now on the cards um, there are also these special events and in the case of the battle plan cards the special events cut, uh, on them cannot be played um, and that's why it's important that you don't run run through them all and find one that you want to deprive the your opponent of and then pick that because this one here for instance is a is a card that can only be played um or, or it's a special event that can only be played by uh, the barbarians whereas this one over here has got three icons on it so it can be played by romans barbarians and parthians but um, as i say these special events don't apply during the game um, you've got seven cards in total though, so you're also dealt from the pack uh, four cards which you play and discard um, in the first turn of the game. And these ones, you can play them for the action on them. And there are four um, typical kind of categories and quite handy. I didn't do this deliberately. But there are the, the, the four types are shown here. You can have movement type cards. So in this particular case, it allows skirmishers to move. Uh, you can have what come under the category of morale. So in this case, it's a rally card. But you can have cards that uh, um, impose fear or confusion on the enemy. Um, you have missile cards. Um, so in this case, it just allows you to um loose your uh missile weapons but you can have other ones for the war engines specifically firing and so on and so forth and then you have melee cards um so charge is a melee card because you you only way you can contact an enemy unit is using this card but then you also have cards that just say melee in red letters and they are ones that um allow you to continue the melee once you have uh, uh, established contact with an enemy unit. Um, now, over, if I show you over this side, the barbarians have gone for a more uh, defensive kind of 
strategy and that's because um, it's very one-sided in terms of army points because um, I put all the figures that I have on the table and the barbarians or the ghouls have got about 176 and if I remember correctly the Romans are about 260 something um, so I've slightly bolstered the uh, barbarian side by pl playing by giving them a stratagem which costs another 10 points and that allows me at the beginning of the game to throw a dice to see um, if there's any mutiny in the Roman ranks and if there is they'll lose some morale value points and um, the game is uh, is won or lost on the uh, morale value points because when you're down to zero you've lost the game um, so I'll, I'll do a bit more on that in, in a moment so over this side I think if I remember rightly it was called Hold and Harry there their battle plan. So in the center they've got a march um, card but on the on the flanks on both flanks they've got this card here which is advance, loose and retire and that can only be played by um, skirmishers but it allows the skirmishers to move up hurl their weapons and then draw back again. Um, now um, in terms of composition there are t about 10 units, I think, on the Bavarian side. You can have between two, no, between one and four stands in a unit. So in this particular case, there are three stands there, three stands there, three stands there. Um, and because the stands are separated, that means they're in open formation. So they're light infantry and they're in open formation and that makes them skirmishers. And therefore, this card can be used um, turn after turn on them and, and will be applicable to all those units. Um, each, each battle has a commander as well. Um, in the centre here, um, the commander is on foot. Um, and although these figures have got armour, it's only this group in the centre here, which you'll notice are, are joined together, so they are in close order. They are a unit of noble warriors but um, just like those other groups I was showing you, um, these are categorised as uh, warriors because um, the army lists prohibit you from having more than one of these with this number of points. Um, so these are categorised as light troops again and they're in open order. So again, these are skirmishers, as are these. Um, the nobles um, have paid to have a stand that has a carinx, which is the sort of horn-shaped musical instrument there. You blow like a bit like a trumpet. And um, all the all the uh, Gauls units have a, have a classification of um, fierce and reputation. Um, the no, by giving them a, a stand with a carinx, which does cost about another 10 points again, it bumps their reputation up to terrifying. Um, more on that as the game goes on. Um, and also the Carinx allows you to impose fear on any enemy units within a certain distance rather than just one unit um, at a time. And then over here we've got another four units, these being um, four, t four stands to a unit. But again, they're all in open order, all light infantry, so they're all skirmishers making this card usable to them and the four cards that um, the barbarian army have been dealt at random are a march card a morale card of, card of fear a move card of maneuver that's quite a good one for changing formation or doing more elaborate moves than just a straightforward march move and a missile loose so they're all quite useful cards um, over on this side, um, as I said in the previous video, the, um, the Romans have the ability to um, make a column formation. So instead of just being a linear formation like that, um, you, like that, you can put two stands behind two. They have to have four stands, legionaries. They can't have... Um, 
less than four. They had to be a complete unit, maximum size. Um, but now they're a column, which means that only the um, they only roll two dice in combat rather than four. Um, but they can remove uh, disorder markers automatically, one one per turn at the end of the turn. Um, the auxiliary archers behind them here, though, however, I've put into open order simply because um, it'll be easier for them to move over some of this terrain that uh, is in uh, in their way. Um, there's a couple of light cavalry there, again in open order, making them skirmishes. Um, four cohorts of legionaries here, all in column formation with the commander and with uh, two Scorpios. Um, the archers and the Scorpios all have the, bit, the, the classification of archery, which allows them to fire over one intervening um, unit. So you keep them behind troops to protect them. Um, over here, these cavalry are defined as light cavalry. So again, in op light cavalry in open order, make some skirmishes. And here I've got one cohort of legionaries who are in open order. Um, they're not skirmishes because they're heavy infantry in open order, but it will allow them to move over some of the terrain. Um, other otherwise, they would have to change formation. If they're in close order, they would have to go into open order to move over some of the difficult terrain. And again, more auxiliary arches um, behind them. So on this question of terrain then, um, I've just laid the table out in a kind of way that leaves a big uh, area in the centre for fighting over. But um, oops, sorry, can I focus for it? This kind of this kind of terrain, as I say, there's nothing but difficult terrain in these rules. Um, in Soldiers of God, that I would have called this a rocky outcrop, and only skirmishes would have been allowed in it, uh, and it would have given cover to them. Um, this is a, a hill, obviously, but um, it has no, there's no recognition of hills in this set of rules, but whereas there is in Soldiers of God. So this, again, is just difficult terrain. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to um, house rule or incorporate the Soldiers of God rules uh, for terrain into this particular game. I just want to show you it as, as it is in the book. Um, but, you know, this... There's no reason really why you couldn't call that a hill and difficult terrain. And it would give you, if you were fighting from it, it would give you a bonus of superior position. Likewise with this one. Um, here I've got some terrain which represents a, a bog. And again in Soldiers of God, rather than moving through it and picking up a dis one disorder marker, um, you would pick up D6 disorder markers. A um, little forested area here, um, a classic example of what I was saying that um, you would expect in a, in a game, you know, for a forested area to give you some cover or concealment. It doesn't do any of that, just makes it awkward to move over, um, you know, which doesn't feel right to me. You would think, you would think at least it would hide the, um, the units inside it. Again, with, there's areas of crops here. All it is is difficult terrain. Um, this is partly why I um, put a lot of the Roman units into kind of open order so that they can just move through things without having to change formation. I've got what, this is what I'm going to call a kind of built up area, that this is in the rules. Um, so you just say that it can occupy a certain number of stands and uh, gives you a superior position if you're fighting from it but you know how often did that happen yeah yeah the the ghouls would uh fight from kind of behind stockades and so on but they wouldn't fight from their villages so much i wouldn't have thought um and that's all kind of uh terrain i've got on the table you know it, it is all literally just difficult terrain um so I think what I'll do, it's um, maybe I should just say that um, in this is quite a large table to be playing a 15 mil game on um, because they recommend that you, you measure it in paces and they recommend that a, in a 15 mil game, a pace is only, uh, what is it, half an inch. 
So as these the in as these columns can only move three paces a turn, they can only move an inch and a half a turn. So it's going to take a while before the armies um, get to grips with one another. So I'm going to I'm going to start playing the game off camera, and then catch up with you again shortly. Right. So the Romans are making steady progress across the table, and the barbarians have. Uh, slowly been moving up but they really wanted the Romans to come to them so I kind of halted them in a lot of uh, terrain because the skirmishers they'll have a slight advantage over the heavier uh, infantry fighting in uh, in terrain um, although the the Roman columns when they get there will be able to remove one disorder marker but anyway, um, slightly rashly, these uh, cavalry have got within uh, charge range now of these uh, this unit here. Um, but it's the barbarians' turn now, and what I'm going to do is take one of the cards, the, ran the, the randomly dealt cards, which is advance, loose, and retire. And any of the units in the centre battle can use this card if they're skirmishers to go forward half a move, loose their javelins and then retire half a move. So in other words, um, there's, nothing, there's nothing to target with this group of skirmishers here. But I'm going to play it on these ones here and they can move forward half their move, which is four inches, uh, throw their javelins, which have a range of one and a half inches and then retire back four inches. They can do all of the three, or they can do one of them or two of them. So they can use that card just to advance half a move or to retire half a move if they wanted. Um, but it has to be done in this order. Um, but I want to do all three. So basically, um, you get a di I'm not going to move them because they're just going to end back up where they started. But you get a dice um, for each stand, so they're rolling four dice, and to hit they require fives. So they've got one hit. And then the cavalry um, have a resolve of five as well, so they can save that throw on a five or a six, which they don't which means that they pick up one disorder marker. Okay, so I'm using these uh, MDF skull tokens as disorder markers, and it's as simple as that. Me melee works in a very similar way. Um, exactly the same mechanism as in Soldiers of God. Um, nothing terribly elaborate about it. More, more of the complexity of the game is in the uh, playing the cards and, and so on. The actual fighting and inflicting injury um, you know, it's pretty straightforward. And basically, um, there are chances to rally that marker off and so on. You can discard a card to do it, or you can play a rally card. Um, but at the end of the turn, if the unit has um, the same number of disorder markers as it has stands, so in this case, if it has four disorder markers, then the army morale value would drop by one. Um, if it has more disorder markers than it has stands, then at the end of the turn, it's taken off the table, it routes, and then you roll on a morale value table to see how much morale the army loses. Um, so it could, depending on the quality of the troops, it could, it could drop you know, substantially. Um, and as I say, the object of the game is to reduce the enemy's morale down to zero. Um, so that's how it works. Right, now it's the Roman turn. And they have played this card out of their hand for the special event, which can only be played by a Roman player. And it forces one of the enemy units to impetuously charge forward. So they've selected that unit there which has charged forward and is now in melee with the cavalry unit. Um, because it's an impetuous charge, they would normally have four dice down to three because they're in open order, but they lose another dice 
because they are charging impetuously. Um, they can fight with their spears in the first round though, so uh, that means they're hitting on fours. Um, the Auxiliary Roman Cavalry likewise have spears, but they cannot use them because they are being attacked rather than charging. Um, so they get four dice again down to three because they're in open order and they are hitting on five. So in this first round of melee, it is um, two, two dice sitting on four against three dice sitting on five. Right, so the Romans have got one hit and uh, Sorry, the Barbarians have got one hit and the Romans have got zero because they were hitting on fives. So the uh, bub the Romans have to roll for resolve one hit, saving it on a five, which they don't. So they pick up another disorder marker. But that was a good move for them to make anyway because it's brought the it's brought that unit forward out of line and they are going to have difficulty they are skirmishers so they can break off the melee but it's not going to be easy for them to uh, detach right so now it's the barbarian turn and i've decided they're going to keep the pressure on um, again they're going to play a card from their hand which is melee now that allows them to um, continue to fight a melee it could be played if these other two units were in melee as well you would fight three melees but it only applies to the one melee that's going on um, and this time the barbarians are going to roll three dice but they're now fighting with their sword sitting on five and the auxiliary cavalry equally are rolling three dice fighting with their sword sitting on fives so the romans are red barbarians are the white dice um, right so there's a lot of hits there for the barbarians so that was a good play for them uh, the Romans have got only got one hit, so I'll leave it like that. So the Romans have to save three, and the Barbarians one, all on five. Ah, right, so these are good dice, aren't they? So the Romans save two, so it's one disorder point for each. Right, so in the Roman turn, um, there's still three cards in the hand to play. Two of them are rallies. Um, so I'm thinking I could use one of those to rally off the disorder markers that the cavalry have got. Um, this one in particular, uh, the special event on it is also a kind of rally. It allows you to remove all the, dis all the disorder points from one unit. Um, that's quite a valuable card to have and it's only a one use. So. Um, once it's used, it's taken out of play altogether rather than put in the discard pack. Um, so I think I'm going to use this rally because you really want to use that when a, a unit is in danger of routing and being moved off the table. So to rally normally, I'm going to play the this, card, this uh, ability here. And you simply roll the number of dice that, are, that there are disorder points. So there are three disorder markers and any success removes a, a marker and their resolve is five. So five or above can remove a, a marker. There's a six there and a, a five there. So they can take off two of those uh, disorder markers. Okay, now this would be a good moment then for the Barbarians to play this card, which is Confusion. Um, and what you do is you randomly select from the opposing player's hand, so not from, um, <clears throat> not from the three permanent cards, but from the, any that are left out of the four ones that are dealt each turn. Um, and you randomly select one to be removed. So because I know what they are, normally you wouldn't, the opponent wouldn't know. Um, I'm going to roll a dice and on uh, one to three it's this card which is the good one and four to six it's that one. So one to three, so 
that's put back in the discard pile. Okay, now the it's the, now the Romans turn, and they have one card left in their hand, which is War Engine Loose, and they have two of the permanent battle plan cards left to play. Um, the War Engines are both here, and they are nowhere near close enough to fire at the enemy. Even if I do move forward, uh, they still be out of range. So I'm going to use this final card in my hand here, in the Roman hand, and discard it. And that allows me to remove that final disorder marker there from the auxiliary cavalry. Okay, so it's a, a few turns further on now. Um, the main legions are still crossing the table, but the cavalry um, has, has got into action on both sides now, um, or both sides of the table. Uh, so over here you've got some tribal uh, mounted warriors and they have been exchanging javelins with these uh, skirmishers here um, without much effect uh, has to be said there's only one disorder marker at the moment on the on the cavalry um, at one point the barbarians did play a card which um, caused the these uh, mercenaries to um, mutiny in a way so they weren't able to act for one turn but the Romans had a card to you know by chance had a card to resolve that so um, that came off quite quickly and then over the other side um, if you had regular units it's quite hard to uh, disengage from melee <coughs> but both these sides um, are skirmishers because they're light cavalry and light infantry respectively in open order um, so the Romans eventually were able to um, withdraw because they were getting the worst of the of the cop of the melee um, and after that they chucked a few javelins at one another again fairly ineffectively um, and the Barbarians eventually got a card that allowed them to withdraw further, so they're now out of javelin distance and a little bit closer to their own lines. And something I forgot to mention, which is a nice little aspect of the rules, is that whenever there's a turn where the warlord of a particular battle isn't engaged in melee and one of his units is, then at the end of the turn you have to roll to see um, whether the army's morale reduces as a result of that um, and it hasn't so far but uh, I thought it probably best to try and get the warlord to move up and join this unit which is the one most likely to be um, involved in melee at any one time um, which is why he's kind of moving across at the moment um, he can't join the unit but he can he can join the melee so if I place him behind, he acts as though he's in support of the melee and rolls uh, to hit on a d6 in, in the melee. So he'll get involved that way. So that's mainly what's happened so far. Right, so it's the end of another turn. Um, the Roman legions are steadily advancing. But uh, one of the nice things about this game is the way you can, you can play cards... Um, to to influence the game without the fight actually taking place as it were so uh, the barbarian side has been quite uh, fortunate in the cards that it's been dealt and has been able to steadily reduce the Roman army morale um, now that's kind of interesting because the the, the morale has to reach zero uh, to lose the game and um, the Romans started off significantly higher morale value. They started off with 21, whereas the barbarians only had 12. And at the moment, the Romans are down to 17 and the barbarians down to 11. So at that rate, um, the, the barbarians could even win the game. But now it's the end turn, uh, morale comes into the factor again because um, the only two units that have been engaged in melee or exchange of missiles have been the cavalry units versus the barbarians. And over here, 
there's a two stand unit now that has three disorder markers so that is going to come off the table influencing the morale still further and the reason that happened was that the Roman command had to make a choice about whether uh, to elect, in the end he rallied some disorder markers off of this group of cavalry um, because the uh, uh, the barbarians got back into melee with them having been dealt a card that allowed them to charge into melee and then re-roll any missed, um, missed hits. Um, so really uh, the Roman com commander, it was near the end of the turn, he was left with a choice of whether to rally off disorder from that cavalry unit or the other one. So it was clearly a better option to keep that one on the table. Um, but what that means now is that um, this warlord still hasn't been engaged in a melee that's been taking place um, in, within his own battle. So um, the Roman's going to have to roll for morale to see how much morale is dropped um, by losing that cavalry unit. So they have to uh, basically roll a dice, there's a table. So they roll two, which means that on between a roll of with a militia unit, which is what they are, between two and five means the Romans lose another two morale. So they are now down to fifteen. And in the case of the warlord fealty, the barbarians roll a dice, and they're fine, they roll a six. But had they rolled a one, the barbarian army resolve uh, morale would have gone down by two. Okay, here's another example then. So, uh, the, the Barbarians have just played this card um, for the special event, which is only uh, available to the, to the Barbarians. And it's to see whether the Roman, one of the Roman siege engines or, or uh, war engines rather, breaks. And um, they've rolled, the Barbarians have rolled a six which means that the war engine breaks catastrophically and is destroyed and the Roman army morale as a result is reduced by a further two for its loss. Um, so that may as well come off the table now because it's completely useless and it means that the uh, Roman army morale is now down to 13 playing an army morale for the barbarians of 11. So it's beginning to even up. Okay, well the Barbarians have had another successful turn, uh, a lot of luck, uh, very useful cards that were dealt to them and so on, um, whereas the Romans have had neither. Uh, at one point the Romans actually traded in two of their cards uh, for a single card, which you're allowed to do, and even that wasn't any use to them. So um, over this side, now that the Roman light cavalry has disappeared and this half of the, of the battle is moving off obliquely that way, um, the barbarians have emerged and are slowly advancing towards these guys. And you can see here that these aren't skirmishers, even though they're in open order. Um, they're medium infantry, but they, they have to be in open order to enter difficult terrain. Um, so they've picked up a disorder marker just for doing that. Um, over in the centre, the, the barbarians are just sort of uh, waiting, inviting the Romans to attack. Um, the melee's not going well over here for the Romans because there were so many useful cards that could be played on this battle. So these guys are kind of uh, just inviting this advance, but the other two units were able to move forward and one was able to uh, wheel 90 degrees to the left and the other 90 degrees to the right. And then further cards allowed these chaps to harry without success uh, with javelins, those units. Uh, but this unit here was able to join the melee so now the cavalry are fighting a unit to the front, a unit to their flank, and they've got the warlord in support. Um, but so far they've managed to uh, 
uh, rally off enough of their disorder points, but they're definitely not in a uh, very strong position now. But as I say, army morale hasn't changed, so it's still 15 plays 11 in favour of the Romans. Just wanted to make this point about the ter rules for terrain again, because they're, they are very simplistic. Um, and I think that's an error of omission, you know, a, a, rather than a of deliberate intent in the walls. So I'll, I'll talk about that again later, maybe. But just in, in this example here, um, the, the, this unit of uh, Gauls here is very successfully harrying um, this unit by um, advancing into this terrain, hurling javelins at the archers at the back here, which is uh, inflicting disorder markers on them, um, and then withdrawing. But um, it is possible for these Roman units to actually react to that, um, to, to turn and not only to uh, loose missiles at these, but actually to enter this terrain and attack them in melee. Now, in Soldiers of God, as I was saying on my previous video, I would have classified this as rocky terrain, and that would have allowed skirmishes only to enter it. And these chaps, even though they're in open order, they aren't skirmishers, but these chaps are light infantry in open order, so they are skirmishers. So it would have allowed them to enter that um, and also give them cover against missile fire. And there's none of that in these rules. And I, I really think um, that's lacking. Um, it, it's not it's not realistic to me to have uh, to ignore terrain to that extent. Um, I accept the argument that uh, a lot of ancient battles took place uh, in cl cleared spaces, but equally, the Romans did find themselves um, confronted by difficult terrain in Germany and so on. And a good commander knew how to how to use terrain to his advantage. Um, e even in the ancient, it wasn't just a, a match like a football match that you turned up and played on an open field. Even in those days, so um, uh, you know, it's just it's just an observation. I, I'm not trying to criticise the rules too much because I do think that I mean I'm really enjoying this game and I think they're a splendid idea, a splendid game. Um, it, it's just I, I would. I, I rarely recommend house ruling uh, things in in war games rules, but in this case, I think it's I think it's necessary. Anyway, more on that later. On with the game. Okay, it's the end of the turn, and uh, basically this legionary cohort here um, has died fighting. Um, it's now got, despite my attempts unsuccessfully to rally off disorder points, it's now got more disorder points than stands. So it's going to come off the table and we're going to roll to see what effect this, that has on the army morale. Um, but the two barbarian units, that unit there and this unit here, have both got disorder points equal to their number of stands. So that automatically takes two points of disorder off their army morale, which is currently 11, so they'll go down to nine. Uh, the, the Romans are currently on 11. I'm gonna roll a dice, and they roll a four, and because they're a professional unit, that means they lose four um, morale. So they are both down to nine now. Um, so the initiative won't, go to the barbarians because the Roman attack plan, battle plan, had a higher initiative value. So for the moment, the Romans have still got the initiative. Okay, end of another turn. And uh, there's definitely a kind of pattern beginning to show. The, uh, the centre of the Roman force is just steadily being drawn deeper and deeper into enemy territory, um, whilst on the flanks, I mean, that melee is still going on. <laughs> it's been going on virtually the whole game. Uh, there's quite a fierce fight going on here to these archers fighting for survival. Um, 
getting the worst of it but they're they're still there and over here um, the barbarians have sort of swept around to threaten the Scorpio there that's definitely in trouble at one point in this last turn it had uh, two disorder markers on it which meant it would have come off the table but I managed to rally them off and uh, this is the only place on the battlefield really where a column of legionaries is in contact with the enemy and they're definitely getting the best better of it the uh, barbarian commander had to put a lot of uh, his resources into reducing the disorder on that barbarian unit down below three um, at one point there was about six disorder markers on it um, so I think in 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 terms of uh, how the battle is going so far it's really interesting because the the morale values are nine for the Romans and eight for the barbarians so when you think of the disparity that the barbarians started on they are definitely wearing the Romans down and and um, the main kind of resource the main strength of the Roman army hasn't been used at all the, the barbarians are, are kind of withdrawing steadily there so keep, keeping out of contact with it and the fights going on the battles being fought on the flanks which um, you know is interesting strategy to develop this is the situation at the moment then so um, the barbarians have uh, withdrawn as much as they can but the, Ro the Roman side uh, had a lot of uh, charge cards and advance cards and so on and uh, have got within striking distance now of the centre of the uh, barbarian line. Um, the barbarians did m manage to manoeuvre around to threaten their flank at one time but then the Romans had a manoeuvre card that allowed them to turn to face the threat so um, and they've also been able to uh, these two cohorts here have been able to open up their formations not open them up but um, go from column to just straightforward closed formation so they'll be more effective in combat now um, so I reckon that it's going to be payback time for the Romans in a moment in the next turn um, but everywhere else the fights are still going on I do like the fact that melees in, both in this game and in Soldiers of God the melees uh, can be very protracted um, unless you're a skirmisher unit you can't withdraw from them anyway and they do tend to go back and forwards a lot at the moment there's not a lot in it there's very few disorder markers on so they've all been rallied off and the the fighting is just sort of uh, continuing on both sides so uh, I think the next the next turn or two will be fairly decisive the Scorpio is in range now um, but as you can see it's threatened from the rear by that unit of uh, barbarians so wait and see what happens there well I must say this is really turning into an exciting game um, it's not a game that um, you can play easily solo because you obviously you know what's in the opposite side's hand but at the same time I, I mean I am finding that I'm managing to it's like playing chess against yourself really you can kind of outwit your yourself and um, what's what's happened now is that in the center uh, the, the Romans now they've got to grips they are really pummeling the the barbarians and it's meant that the the barbarians have had to channel all their attention into this battle in the center to preserve their units um, at the moment they've got this unit of nobles here that are on three disorder points um, whereas you, as you can see the the Romans have managed to clear all those off so it's quite possible that unit will come off the table next turn if they if the Romans can keep applying the pressure and the same over here with this unit of skirmishers they have three as well so they're close to becoming disordered and it's and it's meant that on the flanks where the Romans were hard pressed the the barbarians have haven't been able to keep up the pressure because they're having to play all their cards in the center of the table 
So those fights that were looking pretty bad, especially this one here, the archers are surviving you know, quite well because there's very little fighting going on there. And equally there, um, the Romans have got three disorder markers on that unit, but there's just not been any um, real pressure applied there. It's all, all, the, all the attention has been applied in the centre. So, um, you know, it, uh, the only thing that's gone badly now for the Romans is that uh, they managed to turn the Scorpio around and it did get some hits on the people that were previously attacking them in the rear. But um, they're getting hit by javelins as well. So they now have a single disorder marker. But of course, they're a single stand. So that means they are disordered. And at the end of this turn now, it's reduced their morale down the Roman army's morale down by another point, which means they have less morale now. They're on seven morale, as opposed to the barbarian as eight. So the, the barbarians actually have the initiative in the next turn and will play first. Um, and whether that will make a difference or not, I don't know. Um, it's a bit too late for them now, because being a, a, um, not being a skirmisher unit means they can't withdraw from that melee. And uh, it's that melee that's going to really turn the battle, I think. But anyway, I mean, they've certainly put up a good fight, considering they started off at such a disadvantage. And I am, as I say, I'm really enjoying this. Right, so at the end of this turn then, um, the Barbarians now have this unit, uh, which is disordered, loses them one point of morale. And this unit here, equally disordered, loses them one point of morale. But the Romans have a unit there, disordered, loses them one. And where's the other one? Over here, the archers over here now have uh, four, matching the four stands, so they too are disordered. Um, so that is like a reflection of the fact that the barbarians had the initiative in that move. They both lose two army morale. So the Romans are down to five and the barbarians to six. Um, and that means that the barbarians will re retain the initiative for the next move. But they really are hard pressed. Well, having the initiative seems to help because the battle is, has turned a little in the barbarians' favour now. The Romans have three units on the table. These legionaries. Scorpio and those archers that are disordered meaning that their morale I think is down to three whereas the barbarians just have the one unit there so their morale is down to five so they are again uh, higher in morale so they retain the initiative and they've got slightly more lives as it were so if the Romans go down to zero they've lost the battle whoever goes down to zero first loses the battle so it's quite close well that's it the game is over a barbarian victory um, the Romans were actually down to two morale not three as I said a moment ago and in this last turn the Barbarians were dealt a card that allowed them to reduce the enemy morale by one. And then at the end of the turn, the only disordered unit on the table for either side is that unit of archers there, which takes the Romans down to zero and the Barbarians remain on five. So that was a really good uh, defensive battle from the Barbarians point of view. Uh, they kind of, the, the plan, the battle plan played out as it should have done. They, they held on in the centre, um, distracted a great deal of the Roman strength and uh, inflicted the injuries on the, on the flanks. And when, and then when the battle did actually come to the middle of the table, they were blooded, but they, they held on against the, uh, the, the elite sort of units, the Roman legionaries, so uh, it was a famous sort of stand. Really good, really good game, really good set of rules. Um, don't want to put anyone off these rules by 
criticising the lack of terrain walls too much because as you as you gather you can quite easily just incorporate the walls from soldiers of god maybe house wall something for forests such as you get um, one cover when you're in them so it gives you cover against uh, missile attack and uh, and so on that would that would probably do it um, you know so it's not rocket science to to correct that but I do I do think that they um, left out the chapter in error rather than deliberately because so much of the text sort of refers to the, a non-existent chapter as it were um, and there's a couple of other mistakes that you know that can always be corrected with errata later nothing major um, and as I say really I mean this is playing on my on my own you know knowing what the opponent held in their in their hand but when I when I played the game of Soldiers of God with uh, um, the friend of mine down at the club we had such an exciting game and and it, it really sold him on the walls so he um you know he immediately when he saw soldiers of rome come out he immediately sent off for them and he's got some 28 mil armies i've got these 15 ones so when things get back to normal we should hopefully be able to enjoy quite a lot of games of this yeah so thanks very much for watching hope you found it useful and entertaining and i'll see you on the next video bye for now